COVID cases are rising slowly and steadily. And today, COVID cases have crossed 800 for the first time in the last four months. In fact, the average daily cases have gone up by six times in just a matter of one month. So there might be several questions on whether there's a threat of a new variant. How do you differentiate between the flu virus that's ongoing and COVID-19? To answer all of those questions and whether there's any reason to worry, we have with us public health expert Dr. Sunil Agarg now joining us. She's a member of of uh, the Lancet Commission uh, COVID India Task Force as well. Thanks very much, ma'am, for joining us. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Right. Uh, so first, if we talk about the trend that we're seeing, ma'am, recently, that uh, COVID cases, of course, have crossed 800. So do you think there's a reason to be concerned? The center has also written a letter to several states. You see, uh, I'll say that there is need to be, you know, um, uh, careful about monitoring the whole situation. That is the message I'll give you. Concern is something where you panic, you know, there's no need to panic. I'll say one has to monitor the situation very carefully. But another point I would like to add at this point of time is that that COVID had not gone out of our lives. I'll say that we were seeing cases off and on and off and on. And over a period of time, you see, we were all doubly vaccinated. We were all infected also. And particularly if we were to look at Omicron variant that acted as a variant of support for us mm -hmm. rather than variant of concern, all of us got infected. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but then, you know, over a period of time, you know, particularly, you know, in all the states when we monitored the situation, the number of cases came down, including, you know, the severity of infection and number of cases and that's almost you know finished so i like to say at this point of time that we need to monitor we have got idsp platforms we and we need to look at the data carefully but there's no need to worry about you know take into consideration that all of us are vaccinated hmm. and all of us are also infected. So dual protection is already there. Hmm. But another message I'll give at this point of time is that the people who have not taken precautionary doses, hmm. especially the ones who are elderly and the persons who are suffering from comorbidities, they should take their precautionary dose. So as because that acts as a kind of a booster or precautionary dose, so that will help. So particularly in elderly, whatever, you know, mor morbidity, severe infection we are seeing, they're mostly in elderly. So mm. that is where it is important to be watchful and mm. careful. But as of now, I don't see any wave or any kind of a new variant. And the message for the world is also that be generous and supply vaccines to other countries who do not have much of access. That is important. So we need to be cautious and hospitals are also saying that uh, there's no increase in hospital admissions just yet, though the numbers are increasing. So now if we talk about variants, we saw that it was the Delta wave that created huge devastation in the country. Then it was Omicron, which was comparatively mild. So is there a threat of a new variant driving this surge or is it the Omicron variant only that's uh, leading to this rise in cases? As of now, we are seeing, you know, Omicron variant. And basically, I'll say on 15th of March, uh, you know, WHO declared that we don't have variant of concerns. Whatever variants we've got, they are variants of interest. Mm -hmm. And we have to keep watching them. And, you know, as we go ahead with more and more people, you know, who have been infected and vaccinated, so the chances are much less that, you know, we will get a severer form of infection. Because, you know, when virus finds a susceptible host mm -hmm. who is not you know immunized or who is whose immunity is very low so there you know it finds a way to multiply very very rapidly mm -hmm. and then it goes to a next person who is again not immunized or not having any immunity mm -hmm. so then you know that's how the circle goes on but in the current scenario when you know vaccination rate is quite very high and natural immunity is quite very high so called as hybrid immunity mm -hmm. so i don't see any chances of a severe you know type of mutation happening as of now Right. Uh, and my last question to you also about the flu infection that's currently ongoing. So if somebody has cough and fever and cold, how do they differentiate whether it's a flu or whether they should get tested for COVID? What would your tips be to differentiate between the two since the sim symptoms are so similar? Yeah. I think this is a very pertinent question at this point of time because uh, COVID has made flu more prominent also and more, you know, so-called as attention seeking. Mm -hmm. Every year between January to March, we see a lot of cases of flu, but unfortunately it went unnoticed. And mm -hmm. post rainy season also we would see this. And every year WHO calls a meeting for Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemispheres to decide about the vaccination part and what 
no strain is going to be effective because the strains keep changing. That so accordingly, the people are vaccinated. Uh, but then coming to your next question about the symptoms, mm -hmm. you see, if you will see the symptoms, now there are three conditions. One is COVID, another is flu, and the third is post-COVID symptoms also. Mm -hmm. You know, so important is to be watchful and elicit the history carefully, and see that uh, if people are presenting more with cough and all, then it's more reflective of flu. But then the second part, you know, in cases of COVID, we see more cases with fever, body ache and all. But nonetheless, the message over here, which should be going from this platform is, people should not be prescribing antibiotics indiscriminately. And there is no need to have, you know, uh, unnecessary use of antibiotics mm. because that will lead to antimicrobial resistance. So important is to manage the symptoms. Mm. That is important. And more or less symptoms can be same also. After all, symptoms are what are told by the individual. Mm. So their perception also, you know, they may say that today, ha, ko thoda body ache hua, you know, fever hua, ya ko cough hai thoda. You know, one is that kind of a patient who is walking into the doctor. The second is a severe patient who is hospitalized and all that mm. and we need to be watchful about you know the variants because we have to keep a watch on the situation okay. unnecessarily we not we will not be testing everyone either for you know h1n1 h3n2 or for you know uh, sars cov2 it's only the hospitalized patients we need to keep a watch on them and see that what kinds of variants are in circulation because we need to have our data also in right perspective so that we can take decisions accordingly from the perspective of system strengthening mm. Thanks very much, ma'am, for answering those very important questions. And I think uh, it's the message is loud and clear that there's no need to panic, but it's important to keep your guard up and to follow all precautions as COVID is rising. And it's also rising at a time when flu infections are spreading at a very rapid stage. This is the season for flu as well. So it's important to watch out for the symptoms and differentiate between the two and get tested if you have COVID symptoms. In New Delhi with camera person Gauri Prasad, Priyanshi Sharma for NDTV.